This episode is brought to you by 20 Past 4, your one-stop vaping head shop. They get new stuff weekly. Stop in and check them out. Four locations, two in Great Falls, one in Helena, one in Billings, and Guerrilla Warfare Apparel. The best gear in the fight world. Join the Guerrilla Gang in 2023 because we are taking over. Be sure to use our code TWB10 for 10% off at checkout. That's TWB10 at checkout. And Jamie St. Mark's. Who's ready for the weekly bust? You're in the right place if you came to catch the show. Tithe and Levi are the names of your host. Who the next guest is, I really wanna know. Conversation escalate, let's get to the show. Who's ready for the weekly bust? Alright, so first and foremost, Kyle, who the fuck are you, man? We need to know. Um, Starting Kyle. from the beginning, sir. Right from the mama's womb. Uh, yeah, I'm Kyle Serber. I was born in Haver, Montana. I was pretty much raised there my entire life. Um, I kind of grew up with an uh, alcoholic father and a mother. I was an alcoholic, too. I had a stepfather, several of them. What's Haver was... like? Uh, it's... Oh, no, never mind. We'll talk about that later, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah it just... Haver's... I don't even know. It's a pretty small town, I guess. Once you start to have a bad reputation there, it's kind of hard to get out of. And that's, you know, I grew up pretty with a lot of anger problems and trying to fight and drug addict, alcoholic. Didn't really give a crap about anything at all. Not even myself. Oh, and, don't forget uh, to start the camera, bro. It's on. Uh, no, it's not him. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's no, not, yeah. No, uh, yeah, so... I guess I just, uh, I didn't really have a lot of discipline because I didn't really listen to my parents at all when I was growing up, so I just kind of ran wild as much as I didn't really have care or anything, and my dad was kind of an alcoholic, so he'd go to sleep early, and I was able to sneak out of the house without him waking up, and then I kind of got into the drugs and um, started peddling weed for a guy that was older than me. I was about 16 at this time, and uh, yeah, I ended up in a lot of trouble, and um over the last couple of years, I've really tried hard to change my life, getting sober, um, and exercising, and you know. What, what inspired the change? Um, so I have a daughter with a girl down in Haver, and uh, um, when she got pregnant, um, I wasn't doing very good at that time. No job, none of that stuff going on, and uh, and she dipped out, and there was a lot of chaos. I went there, and I. Uh, started to get high again and at that point I would think I was pretty close to a year sober at that point when I started getting high again and then what was uh, your drug of choice uh at that point it was methamphetamine okay and uh so I was kind of tired of just where I was and who I was becoming and I know that when I start to get into that phase of life that I could do some pretty dangerous stuff you know because I'm not all there as Oh, as as most are, man. Most aren't thinking correctly. Irrational decisions lead to irrational behaviors, and that leads to irrational fucking mistakes. Yeah. Or getting tased in an alley. <laughs> yeah, so I just, uh, I was so tired of, I guess, where I was, and I'm tired of everybody always just, like, coming up with the crackhead thing for me and, like, always bashing on that, so... Um, I just wanted to be something different, do something different, and show people that that's not truly who I am, you know? Sure, yeah. And truly know, like, get to know who I was through all the self-reflection oh, and everything. Down. And just want to not have my kids see that type of stuff growing up, you know, especially my daughter. I'm not in her life at the moment, but it, when I do am and, and everything goes good, I just want, don't want her Thank to have a, a parent that is addicted to anything. Because growing up like that and seeing people like that and, you know, like with my dad and not having the discipline, I want my kids to make sure that they have some kind of discipline and that there's not like, they're not seeing me like that is the main thing. Combat sports definitely bring discipline. I think uh, a lot of, like, being just being around a lot of fighters and the fighting atmosphere, you just see a lot of humbled individuals and a lot of people who are on the right track when it comes to changing their life or keeping their life on the right straight and narrow, you know what I mean? Yeah. They carry a lot of respect for themselves and others because of how much work they put into their own bodies. Yeah, and like that's been like so. You know, when I went to that Glasgow fight, I was only supposed to be there as a corner man, and then all of a sudden something happened up in that fighter meeting, and all of a sudden they needed a fighter, and there was like, five fighters I think down there from Haver at that point, and a few of them were starting to point me out, and 
I went down and weighed myself, and I was close enough to the weight that I just decided to jump in there. I mean, I was literally outside smoking When was this? This was <laughs> uh, yeah, in Glasgow. I think it was Fight for the Future 6 in Glasgow. And uh, Jacob uh, Crytel was actually seven, the... Si- oh, six. six. Seven yeah, was class, involved. Uh, Lewistown, 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 because I missed right. eight, you know, yeah. with the, the stuff going Fuck, on. Fuck, that one was good, though. But, yeah, no, uh, so I got, you know, I've always wanted to jump in there. I think that everybody... There's a lot of people out here that ha- that want to jump in there, but I think the fear of jumping in there scares them away from it. Yeah, sure. But once I got in there and I that, that door was locked, it was almost like a different rush for me. And I'm kind of like an adrenaline junkie, so it Did was you feel awesome. feel like it was a place that you belonged? You found a place that you've been looking yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. I, I really like, you know, because I... I like to fight, I like to go try to fight people and have her when I was like that and stuff. So it was like, it was cool. I guess it was an amazing feeling. Like at first, it was a lot of nerves, and I was like, okay, what's gonna happen? I don't even know the guy I'm fighting or where he's from or who he is or nothing. You know, I'm just in here, and at that point, I, you know, I'm just a street fighter, basically. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. And I go in there and I grab that guy up and I got on his back and I put him in a rear naked choke in 17 seconds and it was like, whoa, this is nuts! Like, fuck yeah, dude, this was dope. <laughs> uh, what are you primarily training now? Right now, um, I'm so I've been I was going down to Glasgow and then um, you know with the snow and stuff and travel and all that stuff, I haven't been back. But I was just talking to Ryan Smotherman again and he's uh, I'm going to probably start going back down there and taking like I was telling you one of the kids that I have that comes over a lot that I'm trying to show a better life or show him you know ways that he doesn't need to go down the roads that I have because I can kind of see a lot of myself in him so I'm trying to show him a better way of life so I'd be taking him down with me down there and then um, her daughter I'd be taking her down there with me, too, because... Uh, How many gyms or clubs does Haver have? Haver has a Haver uh, uh, Rockhound Boxing Club, but I think that their space is so small that it's hard for them to, like, take so many people in. Yeah. And uh, so Glasgow is kind of, like, the closest we got besides here. And, like, Ryan, after the Lewistown fight, is one that approached me and, like, really liked my, you know, for learning off of YouTube for that last boxing match is basically what all I did was in Haver was ran, lifted, and just watched YouTube videos. You got comments, bro? And and got as uh, got as good as I possibly could at you know what I could learn right then and there because I didn't really have anything. Thank you for the stars, Eddie. And uh, and and he he must have liked what he seen or whatever, so he approached me like and invited Ted me right down here. there. And then you know with my niece and stuff and stuff going on, I've been kind of stuck in Haver for the last few months. But when I was down at that Glasgow uh, gym for the few days that I was down there and stuff, like Ryan is such a nice guy. Like he invited me and he was like one of the coolest dudes. And then I don't know if you know who Bobby Overby is. I don't know. He uh, fought at the last NXT year card or whatever. But he, I was there. Yeah. Bobby Overby is the one that like, not, hurt his Not rib. the last one, not in... Uh, in Butte. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bobby Overby, okay, he's yes. from, you know who he is? Shout out to Monty, dude. Yeah, we just so. heard some bad shit about him, man. He had a stroke, uh, so prayers up to him. Yeah, Rockhound is t- Ted Ryder. Yeah, Rockhound. into a striker. Yeah, I've tried to reach out to Rockhound a couple times, but like I said, I think they're so packed, and like maybe my past has a little bit to do with it too. So that's another thing that's cool about like doing this and getting out there is to show people that's not who I am anymore. You're earning your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to show. And another thing is like everybody knows me as like the crackhead and the crazy guy or whatever, so it would be cool to show these guys that I'm not, that's, that's not who I am anymore. And... That those words don't hurt me anymore because I'm the one that gave all these people the ammo to throw back at me, you know. Right. And like I said, I'll tell this to everybody, you know, probably 91% of the stuff that you hear from people of my past is the truth. But, you know, I'm not hiding from you, that anymore. You know, you know you're going to come across where you're just going to feel tired and you, you may be four or five years in, you may be a year in, you know what I mean, where people are still looking at you the same and you're like, mm-hmm. fuck you, dude. Like, I've made the changes that were necessary to, to make the benefit all for everyone right yeah and you're gonna have to you're gonna think of this moment actually i bet you because someone's gonna tell you or I, you know if they haven't already that i am going to because i've been there where you know it's easy to build up a good really uh, like relationship with someone but it's so much easier to destroy it yeah. and then it's harder to replace that relationship that you destroyed yeah you know what i mean so fucking like I'm just giving you the word that you, you know, I don't know how far you are. You are into sobriety, but I got some time. And, you know, against my drug of choices and 
I could tell you that fucking it never feels the same. But you're you're doing the right thing. So you like this this gr- this gratification that you'll get is so internal. Yeah, can't yeah. get it externally. And that's what I've been telling everybody in Haver. I'm glad that you mentioned that. And it's like I've been telling these guys, you know, win, lose, or draw that night. When I walk out of there and I walk out of that place, it's a win inside of my soul. It's, yeah, man, it's, it's a win it's, for it's, me. It's internal, and man. that's a win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, yeah. for sure, absolutely, and like. And, like, that's something that, like, I just, I can't wait to do. I can't wait. You got siblings? Yeah, I got a little brother and an older sister. Okay, and you guys, uh, did you guys all grow up together? And all that um, shit? Me and my brother grew up together. Right. Me and my sister didn't really quite grow up together. She came around probably at her age was 10. She was kind of like the, um, we didn't really know about her. And then, I don't remember, she was, maybe it was eight. It's hard to remember, but she came around. And, yeah, I grew up with them. Um... I'm just happy you're here, man, because I love hearing it like a, a six, like a, a story that's becoming a successful story. Yeah, and it seems like you're putting in the work daily. I see you out there every day, man. Fucking, you know, win, lose, or draw. You're emotionally putting yourself out there into yeah. a vulnerable position, and you're saying, I, I just notice the things that you say daily. A lot of them are good affirmations, and a lot of them are like, "Fuck, I'm having a hard day, but I'm just plugging away still." Yeah, right. that inspires people, man. Yeah, and it's like you know. Uh, being such a negative person for so long um, and knowing that, like, in the morning if I can wake up and read something good or I can post something to some people. I haven't been doing it as much lately, you know. I've been pretty busy, but I need to start jumping on that more in the mornings is just tagging everybody because I feel like there's mornings when I wake up and I jump on Facebook or whatever I'm on Instagram and I just read something positive. It just, like, makes you smile internally. It just starts your day off way better. Yeah. Instagram does do that a lot, doesn't it? What's yeah. that one? What? What'd you say? Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love Instagram for that shit, bro. Yeah. Instagram. That, that's what I tell people. I say IG is more po- like positive than fucking Facebook any day. Because 100%. The, the feeds that I have, are a lot of them are inspirational, man. And Kick they inspire ass, you guys me daily. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I had a question. Ratter and Tobias say hi and good night, Uncle Kyle. I love those boys so much. So what brought you to the corner in Glasgow then, I guess? You know what I mean? Like, why were you back there? What, what, what's your background in the fighting scene? Uh, I guess yeah, I just I just basically have watched fighting. I just kind of rolled around with people and enough, you know. Started as a fan and this. Yeah, just kind of like started wrestling with my friends and stuff, and then all of a sudden we're like tr- learning how to choke each other out and and so like. So no one in your family or anyone was no, fighting. No, no, nobody, and nobody really liked fighting. And then uh, John Bones came out. Fuck. Yeah, that's John the man, dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like we John. met John down in uh, Albuquerque. Uh, yeah, we did. See, I was telling these guys like they don't understand what that was. <laughs> I'm telling people in Haver like I went and trained at a gym where John Jones was the champ and trained yeah. there for how long? Yeah, ever. Yeah, ever. Jackson and, like, Wink, man. It's a, it's a, you know, and like I don't peep. I don't think some of the people really quite understand how the gyms work. They more know the fighters and stuff, and that's where I'm, like, more pay- – like, one of my favorites, if I could probably go anywhere, would be Alpha Male with Uriah Faber and those guys. In About, California? Yeah. I just – I don't know. I've, or, like, with the Diaz boys, I think that would be legendary. You know? Right. Just to yeah. even meet one of those guys would be just something of legendary proportion. Yeah, that'd be 100%. Cool, man. I think they'd be kind of dickheadish, stu- like, stuck up, like, oh, you're from Montana. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, uh, I think it'd be cool to be around that atmosphere. Yeah. With that being said, who do you guys got in that fight? Jake Paul or Nate Diaz? Yeah. Jake Punch is hard as fuck, dude. See, like this. I, he slept people. So you're no, going by points yeah. or you're gonna, are you going to go by knockout? I'm just, I say knockout, dog. I think, really? Yeah. Nobody can do it, get it you? done in UFC, but these are boxing gloves. Yeah, for sure. You're going Jake too? No, I can't. I'd ever go against the Diaz. I don't think. I don't think that's in my soul. Even if I knew they were gonna lose, like it, I think if Kamzat would have fought Diaz, that fight would have been a murder. You know, I don't think Diaz would have been able to beat him. Damn. Uh, who do you got, Levi? Um, last time I went for Jake Paul, he lost. I'm going Nate. Okay. So uh, two out of uh, two out of three on this show are going for fucking Diaz. Uh, I don't think it'll be a knockout, though. You don't think so? Nah. <laughs> Do you think that Nate Diaz could actually knock somebody out? Yeah. He's busted hmm. up some people. He's Do you think that he could have finished Leon if he would have just chased him down? Yes. Yes. And where would that where would that put him right now? Crazy champion. Wouldn't that be yeah, insane? You know. Can it leave? Think about it. It would have been probably Diaz. It probably would have been Diaz fighting Usman. Crazy. And it would have been sick as fuck, dude. Yeah. It would have been sick as fuck because Diaz is uh, 
ground and his defense is, would have been perfect against Usman. Lakers yeah. up five at halftime. Update, Lakers up five at halftime. Uh, so we met you in Lewiston for Kill Eagle. Yeah, and, yeah we did. Um, you know, for, that shit was fun, dude. That was our Kill first Eagle experience seven. actually going to a Kill Eagle event. And it was fucking awesome, actually. It was loud, you know. Uh, there wasn't a ton of people, but the people that were there were fucking loud, you know what I mean? Yeah. They sold out what they could with the venue they had, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, wasn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, it was, like, spaced available. I really, I love fucking Glenn. I loved Glenn Dive, though. That shit was so wicked. A Glenn Dive was another thing, but we, we met him there, and he performed really well in Lewiston. Lewiston, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, that that was the same guy that I had fought in Glasgow, and uh, he wanted a rematch. He just ran it back. Yeah, so he wanted to box because that's what he said his uh, forte was was boxing. So you know, I was like, all right, let's go do this then. You know, and that's that is what that day that I had known I was fighting was August twenty third of last year, and I won't forget that day because that's when I really started to take off running and started to lift and. That was really when my physical physique started to take change, you know, and that's really sure. when it started to make me feel so good. Like, <laughs> I don't know how many people that work out, like, walk by the mirror and, you know, like, flex on that thing. but like, Probably it, all of them. Yeah, you know, like, so I, I caught myself I flexing guess. on the mirror and, like, I could start to see my muscles break, bulking up. And I'm Listen con- to the boys while I'm rolling oats. <laughs> um Jace here, I'm always walking by, like, do my arms look bigger, bro? Do I look like a like, buffer? Isn't, isn't that I mean? the point, though, is, uh, you know, the, when you're working out, is to feel good about yourself? Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, and I feel amazing as far as, like, physically, they think that I've probably ever been, you know? and You were stoked, man, when we interviewed you the first time. Um, I, didn't, I don't think you realized that we were in the house, because mm-hmm. like, we were low-key fucking, that we were uh, there for the first time to view a Kill Eagle show. Yeah. And yeah, we got there a little late. Okay. Yeah, we were. Yeah, it was like we were low key. We kind of just slipped in, and and we were sitting front row. You know, we got to see it all. We recorded some dope shit, and we're like, "Hey, man, when you won," and I was like, "Hey, why don't you come over here real quick?" Yeah, yeah, and uh, I didn't even, you know, I knew of you guys, but I didn't know what you looked like, and so like <laughs> all of a sudden I'm walking away, and Brandon, he, he just is back. Like, he, he is. Yeah. Brandon and Daniela know who you guys are and stuff, so that's when I found Daniela's out I was cousin. on the. Way. I was getting interviewed by the Weekly Bus, dude, and so yeah. it's been a it's been a thing for me to want to get back to an interview with you guys because like I didn't know who you were then, <laughs> you know, and this time I know who you guys are. So you were pretty grateful, actually. You gave us a pretty good post fight interview, man. You were pretty thorough with uh, your um, your gratitude towards Kill Eagle and towards uh, the teammates that came with you or your corners, possibly. Yep. I remember that interview in particular. I was like, that guy had quite the experience and didn't know what the fuck he was doing when he first walked in, but he yeah. walked out with a good interview, man. Yeah, no, I, Mom, I always try to tell people that I'm appreciative. You know, I always try to be thankful and stuff because, like I said, you know, I used to be so negative and unthankful and ungrateful. and It's a lot of baggage to carry, man. Yeah, and I'm still working on a lot of things as far as getting better positively mindset you know there's still some times that my anger likes to get a little bit out of control but i've got I'm like, telling from, you bro yoga really i swear to god yeah so she For works at, she works at uh, uh at the zoo anger issues. Oh. yeah anger issues yoga you know what else really uh cbd yeah. really cbd dmt <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. some psychedelics Allegedly. always help every time. But uh, I brought that as a topic. We'll get yeah, into that yeah. a little later, actually. No, but uh, she's so she works at the zoo health club, so I can definitely try to get into some yoga. I'm not afraid to do nothing like that. You shouldn't be ashamed. It's fucking awesome. I think it's good for the spirit, mind, body, and soul, just like they say it's intended for, and you feel it later. Bro. I do yoga, dude. No yoga problem. Yoga's sick, bro. Yeah. Ain't, no, ain't no thing against it. Yo, I got a, uh, a certificate for uh, doing some gangster yoga shit when I was in the center, dude. Well, then really? Get on it. See, I'm, I'm, to- I'm like, I'm not... A- I'm not afraid, you know, like when you can stand in a treatment center with another guy holding hands singing, why can't we be friends? I don't think it's very hard to be humiliated (laughs) after that. You know what I mean? That's fucking hilarious, man. (laughs) Um, That's a great topic in itself. That's also on the board. But uh, uh, I wanted to bring up uh, an aspect where you're trying to do something for your hometown and have her. And it sounds like you're in the works with Mr. Wesley Kill Eagle and Kill Eagle Promotions to bring in a fight event that's worthwhile to have her 
Yeah. Uh, have her ice rink right have there. Her, the have her ice rink. So I've been in. Uh, I've been talking with uh, um, Amanda Hamilton. She's one of the people that work up at the ice rink, and I went to school with her. And right now she's out on like a business work thing or whatever. But I believe that when she gets back to town, from the way she's been talking, that we're gonna get this ball rolling. And I think that this thing is gonna blow the roof off of the ice rink. Um, I think just with um, we got some really good haver fighters that I think that people haven't seen yet. I know that Ivan Windy Boy is one of the guys that fought down in Glasgow when I was down yeah. there. He's a young kid. He's a young cat. Michael Dunning, he fought that Wyatt Ross. Or Rossi, is that how you say it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. He's that was a good tall, fucking fight. Yeah, was, I thought that was the fight of the night down there, honestly. You know, of course, Patrick Rowe. And that's another thing, like seeing Patrick Rowe, that's the one thing that really pumped me up is like, I don't know who it was in the, in the that was out in the crowd out in Lewistown, but he was walking around talking about Patrick's transformation from like physical, and that like gave me a lot of motivation because like there's all oh, kinds. Oh, the there's all, has a whole city that supports. I mean, it's not a city, but that whole town, that whole area loves Patrick. Yeah, and like so when he was walking around telling me about Patrick Rose's transformation of his body and all that stuff. Um, I was like, whoa. And then it made me realize that people go through all kinds of different transformations. It's not just physical. You know what I mean? There's right. all kinds oh, yeah. of different positive transformations that you can go through. So that really How's it going to like what's it going to feel like for you in particular to bring something like that to the community that is actually a foundation that actually helps children who are fighting cancer in Seattle? You know what's crazy is that uh, it's going to be crazy. You know, considering your background and, you know, actually yeah. you're bringing something to your community that is actually so beneficial for so many people. Yeah. Hell it's yeah. going to be so nice just to, you know, I know that people are going to get out of the, uh, um, out of their chairs and up there and it's going to do a positive thing. And I think that also with the stuff that's going on with my sister and my niece and then being in the Seattle Children's Hospital. And that was something that was cool when you guys came out with that little, uh, tidbit from the ispin thing and he was talking about how his family is over was over there at one point so that's oh, like yeah. knowing that that's a big thing that wesley has in mind is that ronald mcdonald foundation is just giant for me alone and just knowing that people are going to show up and it's going to be a positive thing and it's going to a good thing it's going to feel good for me like i said when i walk out of the ice dome that night which i believe i i really do believe this is going to happen and uh, when I walk out of the ice dome that night, whether I've worn inside the ring, it's what happened outside the ring for me. Oh, sure. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Man. Yeah. I'm uh, hey, because the weekly bus, we can help children fighting cancer around the world. Damn right, Wes. Absolutely. Let's go. Together we rise. Um, so that event is going to be really exciting. I just think for you as an individual, just because of, like, what you said, but then for a community, I mean, like, when's the last time they had, you know, a fight that's going to be broadcasted and shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, like, uh, I don't know. We had, everybody's seen the shot fired thing, so, you know, the last fights that came up there, a lot of bullshit went down. Um, it wasn't very well ran. It wasn't very well promoted. It, it was almost like it was a... Uh, place for Joe Riggs boxers or fighters to put on their showcase on people or something. You know, like it was almost, I don't know, it was really messed up. I didn't like the way it was ran. Um, J.R. Caplet, um, not, you know, he's uh, I, he's an acquaintance. I know who he is, and that's what the craziest thing is, is I wouldn't technically say he's my friend, he's an acquaintance, but the work that him and his people put into put helping Joe put on that show and then uh, for them, uh, Joe said, well, you could take the money over there to that lady, come to find out, saying it was his accountant. Come to find out it was Joe's wife. And, uh, yeah, he didn't end up getting a dime for anything he did, and I think that's a joke. And uh, so, yeah, Joe did get his check back from the commission or whatever, but there was extra tables and chairs that JR had rented to put more people up there, and those are all the chairs and tables that ended up getting smashed. Oh, shit. Sure. Because uh, I think and it was – So, yeah, JR said he wants to uh... – Tell that whole story on his end. Yeah, on our comments on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I oh, really shit. think I really think that would be good. I really think it would be good for Jr. to get up here, and that's one of the biggest things that me and Joe have had. The like, he doesn't. I know he he probably don't give a crap about me. I'm probably some little peon that he don't. You know, whatever. But it's just the fact that we have worked hard on our fairgrounds up there to bring a better fair, to bring better stuff up there. And I'm granted they didn't break anything up there, but like if that's the, you know how the promoter handled that stuff and they know about it, how 
how hard is it going to be to bring like a fight even back up to our fairgrounds? Right. You know? So it's a good opportunity for Kill Eagle to show what it's like to show a professional event. Yeah, yeah. And a professional environment, a professional event. Um, you know, like I just think I've been around Wesley Kill Eagle and he's such a nice lady. His or nice man. His lady is such a nice lady. Um, his kid is cool. And what he's fighting for Shut is up, big, bigger than anybody thinks you know and happen to see my niece laying there like that i can only imagine what wes was going through right. when so he's good, looking at it it's you a know? Good, uh, good time to bring it up um you keep bringing up your niece um you know i know levi knows but the viewers might not know so why don't you go ahead and explain who you mean by your niece and what's going on with her all right so my oh lakers up 10 okay so my uh my niece is uh she's she uh had Three different viruses attacking her. I can't remember. They got weird names, and one of them was a COVID strain. And uh, she had a seizure on the bus, and uh, and got taken up to the hospital. And then how they, old is she? She's seven. And uh, they took her. They took her by the ambulance up to the airport there, and flew her out to Spokane. And she, I think she was there like maybe a week, ten days, and then they flew her to Seattle, and she's been there ever since. And they're about to release my sister and Gabby from the hospital. Um, the last time I heard was the 25th of May. Um, my niece still can't talk. She still can't walk. Um, we'll still we'll still have to be changing her diaper. Um, my sister is basically a single mom, and uh, she's not going to be able to work anymore because of this stuff until we can, uh, you know, at least see if she's going to be able to talk, walk, and all that stuff again. Um, Grateful that she's still around, um, but yeah. So my sister's gonna need a lot of help, and um, I think that that's another thing that like bringing this stuff to the ice dome will really help push that what she needs. You know, foundation, GoFundMe. Um, yeah, maybe Kill Eagle can run a a fifty fifty on it, or you know, something that would help out. Yeah, I mean that's totally cool. Uh, we had a lot of people help. Um, there's still a lot of help going on, but I mean we got a long, long road ahead of us and especially with my sister, you know, having a car and a house and all the other stuff that she's got. It's going to be a struggle. I know that's been a really big inspiration for you. Do you still, um, like, is that, like, an everyday motivation for you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my sister, like I've been saying since this happened, my sister's my hero. My niece is my superhero. I can't, I'm gonna, I am might tear up on you guys, but I'm a, I can't even imagine what it's like to just sit there day in, day out for days straight looking at your child who's basically helpless and there's not a dang thing you can do about it. Yeah. And uh, that's why fighting for Kill Eagle has became even a bigger thing for me is because, like, I, I can't imagine what it was like in his shoes, but I was able to kind of see what it's like to look at it like just my niece helpless. Yeah. That, that, that shit's hard, man. You know, I'm like, I can only make it 20 minutes in that room. Imagine sitting there every day, every hour you're awake. Waking right. up in a hospital, yeah. walking down, not knowing if your kid's going to be there when you get there. How Bless do you your sleep? tough son of a gun. Yeah, how do you sleep? Um, Team Bushido does do the 50-50 the best. best. Yeah. They've been doing it That's for fucking 15-plus years. So shout out to those females. Maybe they can link up with Kill Eagle and run this special. Um, you've been uh, big on who you are as coming back as a person to getting into fighting and what's led you there and why. And a lot of it's been circled around addiction. Yeah. So let's bring it up okay. as, a, as a topic and um, how you feel about it, what's going on and, you know, the current status of where, you know, what's bringing, what, why did you want to bring this up as a topic? Um, I just feel like there's, a lot, you know, like a lot of people out there, especially with the fentanyl use and the way that these drugs are becoming that, you know, all it takes is, you know, to touch something that there's been fentanyl on for you to OD, really, you know, and uh, just is a big thing to me. I know that a lot of people have seen me as, a, you know, a big drug addict and stuff, and I just want to be able to show everybody that it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, as long as you're willing to change who you are and do things different, that you can be anything you want to be. There's a big saying in treatment, and you learn it, and it's called, nothing changes if nothing changes. Yeah. And it's plain and simple. If you think about it, I mean, it sounds like a cliche saying, but if you actually think about it, nothing changes. Yeah. If, if nothing changes. You know, one of the biggest things in my sobriety that's happened so far, I think I was like three to six months sober. I come down here, my buddy Corey Windsor lived here, and he's one of the people that actually moved away from Haver because I was such a crazy drug addict, you know, and props to that, man. I love that kid to death. He rode hard for me through some crazy stuff, you know, and 
I came, he like literally moved away, quit talking to me for six months. And I think that's kind of where the process of my life started to change was I couldn't believe that the best friend I've had for my whole life is not talking to me. So I think it was time to take a look in the mirror and look at what I was doing. And then it just kind of slowly built. And then I finally decided to get sober after the baby stuff happened. And uh, Corey told me, he's like, imagine if you put as much energy into the positive things of life that you do into the negative where you would be at. And I, I'm one of, like, he's, he told me right after that, that's probably going to go in one ear and out the other, like anything else that we tell you. But, and then that day, I, and like I said, right now, sitting here telling you that statement word for word, and that's hit home. So, you know, um, you know, it was just with a person that uh, has come from hard drug use, like my drug of choice was heroin, and fucking, like, I get it. Like, it's pretty inspiring to hear somebody. Like my father, who just up and like did his quit using drugs, and he was a hard drug addict. You pretty much it sounds like you did the same. Uh, this this go around, you know, you went sober on your own, and a lot of people don't understand how much courage it takes to just stop something on your own. Yeah, yeah good on you, my man. Yeah, no, uh, you know as well as I do, Thailand. From going through the system, you learn tools, but it's when you get out there and finally decide to use the tools that you've learned. No, absolutely. I'm a big, I, I'm, I'm an advocate for treatment because if it wasn't for the shit that I went through in treatment, I wouldn't have given a fuck about my life because I didn't know how to. Yeah, exactly. I, you know what I mean? I didn't know how to care for myself Yeah. and look in, at me and, and realize that a lot of my issues are me. And yeah. it's, it's, it's easy to blame everyone else when you're in an everyday environment. Yeah. But when you, when you take yourself out of an everyday environment and you're, you have to internalize all your issues and a lot of them are yourself... That's, yeah. when you, that's when you start to learn, like, well, fuck, man. I guess I have to be the one to fucking change, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's good that when you have people uh, that surround you that know who you are but still stand by and help you become a better person and point out when you're doing negative things. I got some day ones that never fucking doubted. They're yeah. like, well, fuck you. He's a shithead, but he's cool. He's a, he'll come out of it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And it's cool, like, when they know who you are, you know, but know that that's not you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and so, like, I have a lot of... a better person in there? Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, so all those people that have stood by me and stuff is going to be even better when, like, you know, you heard the little crowd I had down in Lewistown that made that trip. Yeah. It's going to be even crazier to have some of those other people that couldn't make that trip there to see you doing something. Oh, yeah. 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 Are you expecting a big home crowd turnout for yourself? Um, (laughs) Yeah. So I like to say this. I'm pretty sure that probably 90% of Haver wants to see me get slept because of who I've been. You know what I mean? Ah, okay. So, so I'm like so almost like the Haver Hill, I guess. Yeah, Trying to be something different. And I do, either way, they're going to show up, you know, and that's hey, what's going to be badass What did I say it. the other day to Levi? I said uh, 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 something that 50 Cent taught me. It was like, fuck, I love all my haters. They do the job for me. Yeah. That's right. I mean? they, they make the, yeah. hard, they make the hard work easy. It's awesome Yeah, that you they say make that. the hard work easy, man. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's awesome that you say that because when I go running through Haver and stuff, and I know that there's people that drive by, and they're probably like, this motherfucker. Like, it just gives doing, you. It's you know? weird because you get a little like fuck you. Hey, you know? yeah. That little fucker I inspired read what, me. Just a I'm gonna read what Wes, Wes said real quick. Okay. Uh, fight for our future stands for so many things. Our main priority is childhood cancer re- uh, treatments, but we fight addiction, bullying, and all the things we need to fight for a better future. Killing promotions, promoting a better future. Shout yes, sir. I'm so glad that he brought up bullying because I think that that's a big thing that's going on right now. Is these kids are being bullied so bad, and um, especially with like you know women. I think that all women, kids growing up, they all should learn some kind of self defense, just because of the world that we're living in right now. You just never know when somebody's gonna try to scoop them up. You know what I mean? So I feel like they really need to uh, learn some kind of self-defense. And then, like, these kids that are being bullied that don't have any guidance and stuff, I think that, you know, jumping into a gym and just boxing or just going and doing some kind of exercise or learning some self-defense so that way you feel like you have a voice to stand up for yourself against people like that. I wanted to um, I'll raise a point. There's a, a child's life that was lost recently, and uh, his dad reached out to the show uh, to maybe stand up and do a seminar at a school, and it sounds like it's becoming quite the issue uh, politically over this. His son basically killed himself over bullying, and I want to talk about his father right now because his father's doing a movement on uh, Dallas Igbert. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right. We met him in Glendive. He didn't go over it. He was a strong individual in Glendive and showed cause, but later on reached out to us about what happened to him and his child. And um, 
it's a pretty fucking serious topic, and I would like to talk about it later when I have yeah. more details to offer on maybe bringing him on the show so he can talk about it himself. But the, it, the bullying shit is an issue, <clears throat> especially in these smaller communities in Montana. A lot of hazing going on, like going on, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And um, we got to we got to learn as Montanans, um, especially now more than ever, it's important to understand that people are different because we're living in a different world, and a lot of different individuals are moving to Montana. Yeah, that's and true. Whether we like it or not, the shit's got to stop, man. We got to be a little more understanding because if we had a little more understanding, we'd have a better world. And it starts at home with us parents. You and know? I'm an asshole, dude. I'll be the first motherfucker to say I'm an asshole, but lately I just like to. To, to lead a, a better life as an individual and not be that dickhead. Yeah. It's just better. You know, it feels better to be the nicer guy. You know what I mean? And I have been trying to practice what I preach. Fair point. No, you're good. Okay, well, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just think that that's, you know, because uh, I'm around a kid right now that's he's a little bit different and stuff, and uh, I think that when he goes to school, there's people that pick on him because he's different. And it's not, you know, it's not cool with me when you got somebody that comes around you and you ask them how their day went at school and they're like, bad, I was bullied, you know what I mean? And then you feel like you try to go to a school board or something and it just not, it doesn't fall even, on deaf ears. Yeah, it's just like you're talking to the wall over there and you're expecting answers to happen. And then they get mad at your kid once you teach them to bully them back, you know, and I just don't think that's right either. Well, I think there's not only a lot of kid bullying, but I, you know, and I, I don't want to say this, but there's a lot of adult from, you know, maybe teachers and shit. And I don't want to point fingers because I don't know. But, you know, behind the curtains, we don't know how these adults are acting as individuals either. No. Picking favorites and doing what the fuck ever. Do you know what I'm saying? I yeah. do. Yeah. I had a teacher here probably about two months ago tell one of these kids that were there, like, you know, saying some bad stuff about me. And, uh, Teachers have a hard job too, so yeah. I don't want to throw them under the bus. I mean, yeah. It's hard to manage fucking one kid, let alone thirty at yeah. one time. You know, but yeah. but do it the right way. You know, and there's no, I don't know if there's a right answer for how to do that, but yeah. like, there's definitely a way of showing compassion to everyone. Yeah, treat the child as if they were your child, each of them. Yeah. Um, oh, and Jeremy said, uh, myself, Dakota High Pine, Big Sky, MMIP, want to do an anti-bullying seminar here and have some of uh, my boxers come in teach some self-defense that's fantastic you know i think that that would be something that we could you know would be cool to bring to the haver area too you know i seen i almost want i would think where did west have that one it was it in harlem or hayes um was it harlem where was it where, what was that where uh, west did the anti-bullying seminar Har harlem yeah harlem yeah I almost wanted to take some kids out there if they weren't in school to do that stuff because i think that would be really that the one that killed kill eagle and yeah. Bill, uh billy wagner one yeah yeah I think that that would uh, be really good for. Uh, it was in Dotson. For yeah, Dotson for Haver, for Haver to have something like that. I don't know how we could figure something out with with that, but I think that'd be really cool if somebody could come. I think there that's one of my favorite parts of using the platform is using the platform for the benefit of our community and and Montana. or communities, yeah, yeah around in the state. And see, that's something I think that's cool because in the you know hour and a half that I've been here, and even before we went live, is just talking about some of these other people that you guys can bring on this platform. That's not just about fighting. You right. know, it's to tell their story, and that's something that I appreciate you guys for having me here today like, is because I'm able to tell my story. We want to have an arthritis it. specialist on here soon, Dr. Yeah. Lay. Actually. Yeah, I mean, be sick. I mean, you guys you guys have blown up, and, I mean, you guys do great things, and I love watching your guys' stories and your posts. They're very moving and informational, and, so, and I think that you guys can set up a lot of things from this place right here. Well, we appreciate it, dude. Thank you. Yeah, talking about inspiring and being motivational for others around us, um, using your own story and your own, you know, in your own words, coming from addiction, you also were locked up and you also did some treatments. What was the benefits of treatment versus being incarcerated? Um, the, tr the treatment was better because you uh, get to do a lot of uh, self-reflection time. You know, you're constantly in classes from pretty much the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. You're doing something, whether it's group-wise, with your counselor, you know, it's just hands-on, learning all the criminal distortions and just every little thing about life Great and how it works. Great way to put that. That was a really fucking good vocab, and it really nailed in what it meant. You know, the criminal, what would you say? The distortions. Distortions. Yeah, yeah that, that was 
Yeah. You know, like, and there's so many criminal distortions out there that you wouldn't even think about, you know, and learning how to handle things. And that's something like I was messaging you about is like these guys that get out of that, you yeah. know, institutionalization yeah. and they go back to the street and they ain't got people that are positive or they ain't got money or they ain't got nothing. And what do you think they go right back to? What they know. Yeah. And that's the drugs and uh, all the other stuff. And I just wish there was more things out there to help those guys get back on the streets. And pre-releases Sadie, thank that, you for don't, that. You know, you know, pre-release is a hard, you know, transition in itself because they still treat you like you are an inmate. Yeah. So, you know, you're not getting that, that essential street feel of life. You know, you're still being like you're very grounded and being very supervised and... Yeah, and I think that, like, you know, when you put, like, these sober houses around, I think those are really starting to kind of become a, more of a thing that I'm starting to find out. But I just think that, like, you go to a pre-release and you relapse once, and they just throw you right back in. Right. Not, that, not being point. understanding. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, okay, it, this is what's going to happen. We just we just put a, a shark into fresh water, you know, yeah. with blood in it, and we expect them not to try to bite. And I think that if they would do better on the write-ups at the pre-release as far as, like, using and how to, like, bring them back to the pre-release. Do you know what I think it is for, and this goes for people in, in medical as well. You just, you know, people in medical or in the justice field dehumanize people in the sense that they lost their humanity for people. Yeah. They, um, like, doctors and stuff, if you ever notice a doctor just kind of looks at you like a robot, how am I supposed to fix you? Mo- emotionless. And when you're dealing with a, a human that's all you're dealing with is emotion. Yeah. Right. So it's, you know, like you got it's like a consider, minefield of emotions. Right. You got to consider in those professions that this is what you fucking chose to do. Dude. Yeah. You got to understand that these people are still human because you've lost your humanity throughout your fucking job. You need to refocus while you're there. Yeah. It's crazy how you can walk into an emergency room, especially like in a little community in Haver and they know he has a dope head. So they automatically already think you're on dope or something. Or they're trying to talk about like I get it that they deal with it so repetitively, but you know the the actuality is why do you do it repetitively? Why do you wake up? Don't forget your cause. Yeah. you know what I mean. Don't forget your cause of why you're there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh next 100%. slide, my man. Oh shit, it's me. My bad. I'm just so used to Levi doing that. Uh, I, like, I got two things going on. You keep talking about Haver, and, um, but people who are going to be watching the show have no idea what the fuck a Haver is. Matter yeah, fact, what does a Haver has it? Yeah. What, Haver, tell Haver, me, you can have her. I don't want her. Yeah, there's, no, I'm just kidding. That's, that's the joke. Uh, Indian, if Haver had her, you can have her yeah, back. Man, yeah. Two natives got too drunk, and one lady was in the room. You know, fuck it, you can have her, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave her and have her. <laughs> uh, have her growing up there is you know, it's a small, good community. It, it, it just oh, depends shit. on, like, who you get in with and who you hang out with. It's How kind big of like is a, it? Uh, what do you think? Seven? There's 9,000 people in Hill County, so I'd say probably what's maybe... 20. Huh? 20. There's not 20,000 in Hill County. No way. Maybe. So, uh, you got a computer? Mm. Can you look that up? The population yeah. of Haver? I think it's like 9,700, if I'm correct. Okay, so it's a small, small community. Yeah, it's a small, <laughs> small community. Even I don't know shit about Haver in my fucking reservation. 9,314. Right yeah. 2021 census. 9,314 people. It's right. so small that, like, I try to tell people all the time, you know. The whole city's going to be in this. Oh, in, shit. Two-point game. <laughs> oh, dude. Lakers up be. 74, 72. This is crazy. Um, so it was such a small community. How big is the center you think it holds? How many people do you think the ice dome can hold, bro? You're talking two or three thousand? You think so? Fifteen hundred? So yeah. it'll be loud anyways. Yeah, it'll be okay. loud. But like uh Wes was messaging me earlier, you know, if we could get up to like the the gymnasium. Oh, Wes is saying five hundred. If we could get up to, like, the gymnasium and, uh, you know, at the college or even the new football field that they just built up there, it'd be crazy. But, like, uh, Shout like out to I, my boy, Eric. He's usually in the studio. Uh, yeah, you, Eric usually is. Uh, uh, like I told Wes, if we could get if we could get into the ice dome and, and do good there and show how a good fight's run, I guarantee we could figure something out to get up into the – Armory gym. Or I think we could get in there field. currently. You think so? Possibly. Oh, yeah. With 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 Kill Eagles promotion and his resume. Yeah. Um, and then us on board. Oh, yeah, that's his piggyback. Center was dope, it, it gives though. it gives Haver an opportunity to be viewed worldwide. And how many opportunities does Haver get a world chance? Right. Yeah. 
you know, um, I think it's a great opportunity and a better pitch for Kill Eagle just to move on to a bigger venue in Haver. If you, if if they're especially as a negotiating chip, might might as well knock on the door of someone else and say who what. Did he have something better to offer? The two, for sure. The, sold out the Topeki Center, so. He did sell out the Topeki Center, and that motherfucker was dope. <laughs> Glendive was packed. If you look at some of the pictures, that motherfucker was, and they had double fucking story rafters, and it was legit. It was sick, dude. Bro, if we could get if we could get up to the Armory Gym, that would be insane. Berserk, or what? Would that go ballistic? Oh, that would be insane. That would be insane. Yeah. Um and you know and I think that's the ultimate mission in Haver is to bring a show. And yes. what I mean by a Mike show Mike Matter, what up? What I mean by a show, what up, Mike, is like showmanship, showing people how to get an event going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lights, camera, action, the deal. Oh, for sure. For sure. And Wesley was up in the North Forty uh uh gym here a while back and I wasn't up at those fights. Um I don't know how he did up there, but I guarantee with um you know, the fighters that we got in Haver right now that I feel will show out just because it's a promotion in Haver fight. And I think that... You is know, it a like, fight community? Like, is, is there a lot of fighters there? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fighters there, but there's not enough places to, like, train and stuff, so... Jory Erickson had fights in there years ago, but the college said they'd never do it again. Is that right? Dang. Well, I bet you we have we, we could always repitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm never a man of no. Um, I don't like hearing that word very well. You know? Yeah, that's good though. Um, so you you talk about Haver and Haver you know, the placement of Haver in close. Montana is outside of a very predominant fucking reservation. Yes. You know, does it bring issues off the res, or do you know of any ways that you can improve the res? Because you know, th- there's always this stigma about reservations, and you know, they're bad news. Yeah, I just think that if like we had more to do on the reservations and. Uh, you know, really started with the youth and had a better upbringing out there and stuff, that it'd be better. But that's, you know, I have a lot of my friends that I'm around are Native American, and um, I'm not a racist by any means. I'll never be that way. And uh, I, I just really wish that they had more guidance for the, their youth out there because I know that there's phenomenal athletes, there's phenomenal people out there. Right, they you know, so that was... a chance to leave their rest. That was my question is how do you improve it, though? Um, do you... It, do they have skate parks and shit out there? Yes, they built a really nice skate park out in Box Elder here. I'm not too sure how long ago it was, but I mean, I've seen kids out there riding on that thing all the time. And we, they, the same guy that uh, uh, basis from Pearl Jam built the skate park in Haver, and it's just crazy really? to see how much it gets used. Both places, you know, and I just feel like even in Haver, and I think it's you know a lot of these small communities that don't have enough to do. Well, what are the kids out doing if they don't got nothing to do? Usually causing trouble or getting into trouble, you know? Like, we don't even have a place in Haver that you can really go to an open gym and shoot hoops. But I think, like, Tuesdays at the gym from, like, 7 to 8. Do you guys Are you guys seeing any improvements in marijuana by chance with taxes? Do we know? For your county, because Great Falls, only uh, Black Eagle gets in right, right, yeah. around here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We just added a 3%. We were playing 23%, I think, is what it is. But I think the prices are too. just getting higher. You guys are 23 too. But yeah. Are you seeing anything, like any talk with using that money uh, for the marijuana? Like through your roads for, or anything? For the growth of the community, such as for children's activities, like he was just discussing. So uh, all of our dispensaries are not allowed in city limits still. So I think that all the money would just go to the county. If I'm, I'm not too sure how all the tax stuff works, but I believe if you're in the county, that's where it goes, right? Yeah, That's where it's supposed county. to go. I mean, after all the years, fucking Black Eagle finally got theirs done, so. Wow. I mean, I'm just looking to see the benefits later on because, you know, that's something that uh, we, as me, I'm a, I use marijuana for medical purposes, and I like to be stoned all the time. Me too. <laughs> but, me uh, too. Um, without it, though, my mind is a fucking cluttered mess, and I'm a anxiety-ridden chihuahua, and I don't leave my house. And... Um, I need it, you know, so so it helped me stay sober from everything else. And so let me ask you this, and this is something sometimes I struggle with, like if I don't have any weed, I can kind of start to get irritable. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm also that way sometimes. Yeah. Um, It's just because the reality's kicking in. (laughs) 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 You know what I mean? Um, uh, We got the Lakers. Don't mind us getting distracted. But Wes and Delane are going to try opening up a gym in Fort Bell now so the kids have a better alternative. That's there we awesome. Go. So that would be, you know, that. Listen to what the show's about. Wes is full of awesome information, man. He's always great to have on the show. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. 
Levi, uh, go, go ahead, ahead and bro. ask some topics, baby. All right, what do you guys think about Vice going bankrupt recently? That was a show we it's fucking grew wild, up watching. Dude. Uh, is it because they do everything for free? They did, right? Right. You know, like all the good stories are for free, bro. Yeah. But they also uh, they're my changed idols, o- dude. They changed ownership a few years ago. So did they? To who? Yeah. Uh, like, was it not independent anymore? I don't know. Dude, advice. No, I think they went like got bought out big time. That Fuck. was like big when we were growing up, you know. Well, I think. Well, dude, I always do. Do you ever feel like Vice went out? Do I feel like they went out? Yeah, like uh, like we're not relevant anymore. I still feel the like last Vice five is, years. I feel like Vice is heard still relevant. Well, I, I watch uh, I, I watch watched documentaries. A, I just watched the Jelly Roll was... thing. How long did he do that? The, his little thing that he that was just a couple years ago, wasn't I it? I don't know. Jelly Roll. I'm Could not have sure. Years ago though, because Jelly Roll's been out for a while. But I'm yeah. still watching yeah, their yeah, documentaries true. today, dude. Like I just watched a Vice documentary like two days ago. Let me ask you this. I got a question for you guys. How has your music cha- taste changed as you've like, grown? Has it, like, none. So, none at all? None. See, I used to, <laughs> I'm um, so fucking see, locked used, in still with really, the same shit. I used to like to listen to Eminem, and then I switched like over to Jelly Roll. And it's just been like weird. I don't know. I'm on a Jelly Roll kick because he speaks to like my soul. And I've it, added more like uh, electronic music in to my life. Yeah, you did. Few, That's true. Maybe 10 years. I've gotten that, more mostly not. centered towards rap. I used to have a more broad selection towards rock and country, but now I'm more rap than ever. I really like how much you like Nipsey. Uh, that's my idol, man. I love Nipsey Hustle is like Jesus Christ to me because of the words that he says inspires me to be a way better person. And his his mind state of um, success and generational wealth and where he came from and the benefits of changing your life can lead you is the reason why I like... If if that ain't like shit like Jesus, because what does Jesus do for people? He inspires them to be better people. Yeah. Right? So that's how I think of Nips. Like Nips' lyrics, his words, his fucking interviews, all that shit is a Bible to me, dude. And I soak it in just like God was speaking. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, everybody has their own uh, way of uh, being positive or learning from somebody. You don't just need to have a right. higher power. Uh, I, he's definitely not my higher power because I do believe in God, but like his words are like Christ to me, like for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I view his words, and it's so far it has changed, helped change my life. It's helped motivate change my life. Yeah, if you want to listen to a good album, just put on twelve Nipsey Hustle interviews. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! Seriously. There you go. Yeah. Um. So listen to T Grizzly first day out. Uh, is that, that who you've been listening to in the gym? Like, what do you guys do? Gym music, bro. Oh, dude, '80s music. I really like to listen. to Really? That. I really like to listen to. It's so like Footloose type shit. Like, I like to listen to ACDC, Thunderstruck, oh, Crazy like Rock Train, and Roll by Ozzy. Oh, that's a good time yeah. to re- talk about Power Trip. Yeah. Like no, no, he's lying. He's listening to Richard Pryor fucking mixes. In there. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, no, I just. Uh, <laughs> I like Thunderstruck. I think I could put that on repeat and listen to it the whole time. Just it's just it really like stand up comedy the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I've done it. Really? Yeah. Really? But I, I mean, I'm, how often do I work out? Not very. But. Imagine working out to like a love song, like, you know, oh, you're hell just he's love. Love. So, yeah. yeah. Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> you just lift yeah. your fucking 200 pounds and repetitively. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the, hey, that beat does get banging, though. So really. It does fuck. Yeah, that shit picks up, doesn't it? <laughs> um, you know, have you got have you done any psychedelics in order like microdosing or anything? Dude, I, I I firmly believe that if I had enough money, that I would microdose every day of my life because Fair just point. the euphoria and people the, are calling it the new marijuana. It, dude, they I, just got labeled that this is like yeah. yesterday. Yeah, let's go. I'll, I'm with anytime. It's so good. crazy. Like I hear people talk about having bad trips and stuff, and I don't think I've ever had a bad trip. In I my have life. been stuck in Mario Land one time. Really? Yeah, it was just too far. I think I was too high. Um, <laughs> this is when I was a kid. I was 17. I was frying on mushrooms, and it lasted like nine hours, dude. And I thought I was done. Yeah, that's, that's what they see. I, they I just think, kept whipping my ass, dude. <laughs> yeah, see, I think that like when I get when I see mushrooms, it just makes me so happy because I know I'm about to be fucking laughing my ass off and they having say, a good time, having a better time than everybody else. One single full dose can help benefit someone's psychological behaviors for up to six weeks after. True. That's what they say. I know people going through it right now. And uh, if you think about it, I mean, six weeks off of one single dose of 
psychedelics, whether it's acid or fucking shrooms. Or oh, DMT. I like acid too. I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, <laughs> right there with you, brother. Yeah, I love six weeks of benefits instead of taking a daily pill. Think about that. That's fucking dope, right? It's insane. Rather no wonder the the, the, the big pharma is fighting so hard to arrest people. <laughs> yeah, right. Doing the things with the stuff. Sure. Pump, pump the county full of millions of dollars to get them on crack again. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you know for I mean? reals though. Next slide. You know, oh, next slide. My bad, guys. Yeah, I would say yeah. so. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yep. I would oh, wait, we didn't talk about the Broncos. Or the oh, oh the Broncos. Well, yeah, that like, uh, That's something that we should talk about. You know, uh, last year was like, it uh, looks fucking amazing during yeah. training camp, dude. You know, last the boys year, are connection just... at the basketball games. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. That was kind of sad, you know, watching uh, Russ cheer who, for who fucking we cheer for cheer for the team that we don't <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. My <laughs> wife's all like, "Man, you'd like that." I was like, "No." Yeah. No. No. <laughs> uh, you know. I, the uh, whole... my, my wife's a huge Russell Wilson fan because she's a Seattle fan. Yeah. And so she's, you know, in my household, I seen it two years before it was coming. And I said, Russell's coming to the Broncos. And she's like, there's no fucking way. And I said, I guarantee it. Two years later, fast forward, sure enough, there he is. But uh, she uh, still rubs in. She's like, ah, yeah, I hope you get another season like you did last year. I was like, fuck you. Hell man. no. God, that was a bad season. Oh, dude. It's Broncos like... going to the World Series. Mariners going to the Super Bowl. Damn right, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, no, that Let's was get them back ass for it. <laughs> yeah. No, I was that last year for the Broncos was pretty uh, atrocious. Let down, dude. you know, like because I kind of got cocky. Was it though? We played some damn good fucking football. We didn't lose by a lot, and we played hard. Yeah, our defense just was phenomenal. We just so couldn't score, bad, dude. So do you look think, at that so defense. Bad, so, so look I got at the defense. Though. I got a question. Do you think the that the defense phenomenal. was so sick of the shit that on Christmas Day they just were gave like, up. we're oh, done. Yeah. Yeah. Here, we're going to get shit on on national I think TV so. on Christmas Day. I think they gave Day. up. Yeah. Shout out to Jay Sims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, fuck this. Dude. Yeah, he's, he's my favorite player right now to watch, dude. I'm a PS2 guy. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I love Patrick. Patrick is sick, too. Okay, so who's your favorite player to watch outside the Broncos? Oh, good question. Uh, I'm, you know, I was still very much a very uh, Tom Brady fan, and uh, now that he's gone, uh, it's really tough for me to even give a fuck about anybody else. See, I'm not a. I hate the Cowboys more than anything, but watching Micah Parsons play. Is I do love. Okay, okay. So I like watching yeah, Dallas I like because I have two dads, um, but. Uh, a stepdad and a biological father that love Dallas, and I I like cheering for Dallas, and I love Seattle, so. Don't get me wrong, but I don't have a particular player in Seattle no more. I like I just like to watch Seattle because of my wife. Yeah. See, and um I just like watching Lamar work, but that's probably not my original answer. Really? Just keeping it to the Ravens. But if I'm thinking about that, no. You got no. Chase Chase over here who's just thinking about Justin Jefferson. That's He's what just he, jacking he, off yeah. Oh dude, he wakes up, Justin Jefferson goes He's to a, sleep, Justin Jefferson. His grill is the dopest fucking grill in history, dude. How about iced out Kirk? Each tooth is a fucking diamond, dude. It's yeah. huge, dude. It, like, and they have him cut to oh, his teeth. Oh, Kirk was fucking funny, dude. Dude, Kirk, iced slim. out Kirk. Yeah, uh, he's cool, Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I, I, I think he's actually an underrated quarterback, to be fair. I think uh, he gets shit on a lot, and I think he has a lot of talent. Yeah. I'm dead ass serious. I, I, I will be the first to say it, and that I think that that's a guy worth watching. Uh, because he does perform well. Uh, Fair point. BKFC 44, we have a massive event in Great Falls coming. Are you going to come? Yes, absolutely going to be oh, down 100%. here for sure. So, All of us will be down here. And uh, I Russell met, Wilson's a shit, Sadie. I met Kai there for a second when I was down in um, in Lewistown. Yeah, and, he's, yep. And uh, he was I, followed, yeah. I followed him while he was wrestling because Miles Mazurkiewicz was a, a really great wrestler from Haver that I, you know, was happened to be acquaintances with and really respected the kids. So Kai was another guy that I was kind of watching because you'd see the articles about Miles wrestling in college, and that was kind of the time that Kai was coming up through like the younger ranks. Hey, do you, you got know? my shirt? Which one? Uh, Peto one. Oh, yeah, so uh, that actually might be in my backpack. Nice, dude. Okay, so wherever that is, I want to showcase that shirt. Yeah. Oh, the one that Dave had. Dave Evans, yeah. Dude, those were legendary, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Wood chipper day. We need to start, like, a wood chipper day where we just send them through wood chippers. It'd be, like, one day in the United States where we just take all of them and just get rid of them. Wait, did I give it to you? Never gave it to me, bro. Oh. You told me one day it was in your backpack and that was it. It might still be in there. Who knows? No. Oh, okay. no. 
Um, with you know, we got BKFC forty four coming, and um, the main event there is Kai versus Louis. Uh, obvious for maybe us, Pat Mahomes, but not by maybe the not way. for others. Who do you got? Maybe. Uh, I want to see Kai win that fight. You know, obviously, I you know I said some stuff on one of these guys is because uh, June 9th, there's a softball tournament going on down here too that I'm gonna play in, and one of the guys had posted something about Louie, and I just got on there and be like, yeah, Kai all the way or whatever, and then all of a sudden Louie's messaging me, telling me he's gonna mess me up in front of my kids <laughs> and he's gonna do all this and all that. And it's like, do what weird you do. behaviors. It's just crazy that you know, like, okay, so I don't know if you guys watch much of the UFC. Do you remember Tough when that uh, Jamie? No. So this guy, he was right. go, he was getting ready to go into the final finale, and he was, like, kicking the window out of the limo and running around in the uh, hotel, like, I'm in the UFC, I'm in the UFC. And Dana White had a, kicked him off before the finale came. He literally got kicked off the show, and he was in the championship to, to get a contract. And it's almost what watching Louie's like, you know what I mean? Like, he's out in public just, like, you know, writing these weird tips, showing his Rolex or whatever that watch is, out of, hanging out of cars, like... It's just, like, <laughs> crazy to watch, man. It's, like, I don't even know what to say about the guy. Like, I don't, you know, if he's taking it that personal that a lot of us peons, as you would call us, you know, are saying something about him, then that shows you that he's so stuck on what people think about him and that his life would probably be a lot better if he gave two shits what anybody else thought. You're in a position, like, bro... Like, he's in a position to where he doesn't even really have to worry about peons or what they think of him here if he does something about it. You know what I mean? And, like, to worry about what this little guy over here is saying about you is a that's lot of what, energy That's spent. where the mind state of champion mentality comes in, where Kai has champion mentality. Yeah, Kai and is set. He's doing his – you can see him working. You don't see him, like, out – you know, like, hey, Kai, you're going to get beat up by Louie. You don't see him, like, what, what, what? You almost stick my – out and while I'm holding the belt or whatever he had said to that person. <laughs> this card in particular, though, is packed with a bunch of players, man. We got Dallas Davison, and we got Billy Wagner, who's going to be on there. We got Leo's coming back. Yeah, I heard Leo was coming back, dude. I really liked watching that guy when I was younger. He was one of my favorite uh, Montana fighters, to f uh, or one of my favorite. Okay, it looked like his last uh, UFC or BKFC fight. That's just going to be dope. Yeah, no, Leo looked really well in his last fight. Whatever happened to the kid named Cody Vukasin? Is that his name? Uh, yeah, right? and he's a phenomenal boxer, actually. Yeah. yeah, he was a champ there for a while around here, and he was fun to watch, too. I've been trying to get him to come on the show for a while, and uh, it sounds like he's considering uh, coming out of retirement. He did retire, um, and it sounds like he's going to be coming. I don't know. He's throwing interest around anyway. So Dude, he, he was one of the no, funnest I think, people I think Cody watch. coming back would be good. I would be awesome for the sport and for Montana because the guy has hands. Yeah, bro, he was fun to watch. Him yeah. and Leo were the two people that I really started watching in Montana that really gave me interest in wanting to fight here. We got another really, really big opportunity. So, you know, I always want to stress the fact that uh, what Kai and Louie are doing, regardless of Louie's name and how I feel about him, what they are doing is so special for Montana. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is a world belt, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, that's what people aren't understanding. I think, like, it's being un it's being – it's not – it's underappreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Like these, it, uh, yeah, dude. I just wish that people would understand the magnitude of what it's in the about fastest to growing combat sport. Right. In the world. This isn't a fucking slump promotion. This isn't a little promotion. This is a worldwide major influence, majorly watched, unlocking new states title almost weekly. that our boy is going for. <laughs> yeah. Did you see what was just put on there? You got to read that one. Can well, you? Dave is going to make an anti-pedophile shirt that says, Give him the good old dick twist. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we also have for a treat for Montana is Sean. Just His fight just got announced. Sean O'Malley versus uh, Algermain Sterling. Yep. And Al that Joe. is going to be fun to watch. We knew it was coming uh, after what we've seen. In dude, watching this video on Sean's striking skills, like he's fainting uppercuts and then coming around with the right hooks and hitting them. He's masterful, and I love watching Sean. Sean was cool to fucking meet and be around with my son, and uh, I think that it's going to be phenomenal to see two world titles in Montana. Hell yeah, yeah. That'd be, yeah, I think that he's going to win that fight against Al John. I think that a lot of questions are going to be answered about how good of a wrestler Sean has become because I think that his striking's always been so good that the wrestling just starts to fit in. I feel like when you're so good at one skill, you start working hard on the other parts of your game, and especially to be going for a UFC championship, you got to be that good.
Yeah, exactly. Jamie's it's, saying that she got Kai versus Louis might go into a six of them. I could see it happening because of the environment that it happens, and Kai likes to uh, bang, and uh, Louis likes to bang, and if David's that impressed with how they go one through five, I could highly, highly expect a six round. Really? But no, I, I would think that Kai. So you can bring a six round into BKFC? If it's. If, it's went if three if times it comes now. comes to a draw in, in, a, in a championship fight, and if the fifth count and we get a winner, we have to go to a sudden death. That's sick. And, yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's usually. We had one two events ago. Yeah, and it was awesome. Each time I've seen a six round, it's been fucking sick. Because they Come really on, know boys, that we're down is, four. Th- there's no edge, and they have to fucking bang. Yeah. Um, we got a big ass fight coming this weekend with Loma versus Haney, I think, uh, on the Saturday. And who do you got? Devin? I got Haney by knockout. Dude, really? Everyone yeah. seems to go Haney. Everyone's sleeping on Loma. I think they yeah. think he's washed. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I think I think Loma's gonna, is going to show this kid about what a veteran looks like, and I think that Devin Haney has a fucking phenomenal punch, and he's a really really good sharp boxer, but he's stepping in with a master. Loma's a master. So do you think the winner of this Loma versus Haney fight should fight Tank? Oh, my God. Please, Loma oh. and Tank. That would be so amazing. That would be sick, dude. Oh, my fucking God. I can't even think like that because I didn't even think that Loma would be in this position myself. But Loma is here. Yeah, he's and, definitely yeah, here. Yeah. And he's like, when people think like Loma is here, you know what I mean? Like nobody understands like because Loma Machenko is, he took that time off and people forgot because Tank rose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Canelo rose. So what do you think? What do you think about uh, um, the winner? Like, so we'll have Tank fight Shakur Stevenson, right? That's who I said. Right. And then the said, winner yes. of that fight fights the winner of this fight right here. That's what, oh, man. Dude. That makes sense, right? That would make so yeah. much sense. Just and then we could a, probably see it in January or something. God, it'd be so sick. Could you imagine if we had uh, the, those fights line out the way we've seen them? Because, yeah. you know, I think Tank doesn't want to take much time off because of how sharp he looked. Yeah, he was good. Fuck, he looked good. I think and that I, was the best tank we've ever seen. And I, I'm telling, like, so I used to believe that I had to punch people in the head, especially when I was, like, street fighting and learning about these body shots and watching these people they get hit in the liver. People, it cri- yeah, you want to you want to land a power shot on somebody, torture their body, because eventually those arms are going to drop, they're going to get tired, and that's when you can land Stop your kill shot. Your head you know? shots. Yeah. yeah, land that kill shot on them. Uh, I, and you watched, I think the world got to witness the best version of Javante Davis ever yeah ever i think you know mm-hmm. he came off two hard fights and with floyd not being present and then floyd being present again yeah we've seen a much improved fucking javante davis oh, fair absolutely. point yes he, yep. and he straight that's up told what him made me he... take ryan i was just hoping that floyd wasn't over there <laughs> <laughs> no uh, i think that uh he he told him exactly you know he's like you drop your hands and i'm gonna hit you on that chin and then second round bang hey, he dropped him right away ryan's mother room said hey you remember what i told you about the body there you go. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, Ryan, right, uh, I didn't get to mention that enough, I don't think, and I want to shoot that out there as the Glasgow Combat Sports. Um, Sarah and Bobby were so good with those kids when I was down there watching them coach, and just the way that the vibe is between Ryan, Sarah, and Bobby, it just kind of makes the vibes really good. Ryan really tries to push you to be in there, and I think that I'd, I, uh, I didn't respect that enough from him right then and there like I should have. And so I'm glad that we've been talking, and I'm glad that I'm going to get the chance to go back down there and in a totally different mind state than I was and not having to worry about the weather and being able to take some of the kids down there and stuff with me too would be amazing. You know, there's a saying that says, don't cross a wooden bridge if there's a potential to burn it. Yeah. Uh, that's I've, I've, I've internalized that, you know what I mean? Because on a, you know, the, everyone says or does shit that could potentially burn a bridge, right? Yeah, you got to rely on the fact that that relationship was meant to handle hard times. Fair point. So I choose the people I need around me very selectively, and I think uh, some pass. I'm passing advice to you. If you've never heard it before, I hope you internalize that advice as well. You know, because I'm glad that you. I, I heard that you're like fuck. I don't know. You know, maybe I didn't take his advice as serious, but now you guys are mending your wounds, and that's that's nice to hear, dude. Yeah, no, he is. Uh, they were such great people down there. You know. uh Bobby's one of the nicest men you'll ever meet, and watching those guys with that kid, like I'd trust leaving my kids with those guys all day and take off, you know, because they were so good with them and just the way that they worked with them. And I just think that that was know, in Glasgow. Yeah, Word. I just wish more people would 
Well, cool. Right just to him for starting a club in a smaller area, man. That's Hell yeah. Great that outlet. That gym is nice. Um, really cool. We have a, also another big fight that you might have a prediction on. Do you have any predictions on all these? So you got Haney over Loma. Yep. Kai over Louie. Yep. And what Sean about Sean over Al Jermaine. Okay. And then we have Dustin versus Justin. And two. Justin Gaethje uh, versus uh, Dustin Poirier. Two. So and do you remember the fight with Tony Ferguson and Justin Gaethje? Of course, any you fighter does because that was the first fight, like any type of sport we had after like the COVID stuff, you know? Yeah. And uh, if you remember there in the corner, Justin's coach was telling him like, don't start to get all crazy because you did that in those two fights. You know what I mean? And I think that one of those fights was when he fought Puya and got slept. And I, so I can't wait for this fight to come back with, uh, you know, these two. I think that it's going to be fireworks, and I don't even want to pick a winner on that fight because I think that I'm going to be so lost the whole Someone's time. Someone's telling you you must, so. Okay, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to take Dustin. I got Dustin as well. I like Dustin. What you got, Levi? Go Justin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. And uh, we have another uh, big TV show. We got the, the, the uh, Ultimate Fighter. 31, yeah. McGregor and Chandler. And Hunter Azure from Poplar, Montana, right? Is then going to be uh, one of the contestants on the show Is as that well. for real? For reals. Oh, shit, I didn't know. Go Montana. Yeah. Go Hunter Azure. Yeah, no, Hunter Azure, from what I'm reading, is uh, going to be... Where's he out of? Hey, JR. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> JR. JR. Uh, JR, this is the kid I was talking about that helped run all that stuff. And he okay. put my prediction for Kai versus Louie fight is Joe Riggs losing by KO. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, what was my uh, initial thought on that again for Ultimate Fighter? What did I fucking just say? Dude, I forgot. Dude, the previews to that have been re- crazy, I guess. There's a part where Connor just throws it. Oh, no, Hunter it. Azure. Where's he out of? Poplar, Montana, right? I think he fight, yeah, he Poplar, lives down in uh right. down in uh. Just said too. Yeah, Hunter's from Poplar, and I think he's uh, down in Arizona or New Mexico training. Last time I heard, it's eight awesome. point game, Denver up. Jesus. Um, so we got uh with the the Ultimate Fighter. You know who do you have in the end? You know, obviously they line up Chandler or McGregor. I'd love to say that I could see McGregor winning a fight again, but it's so hard because when's the last time he won one? I mean, Cowboy Cerrone, yeah, but I mean, this guy's been getting smashed on. But I hope By that he's taking the, athletes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that he's taking the time to get back into it, the game, and I think that if Connor comes in fully prepared, that that I'll take Connor. But yeah. if, if if Connor's out doing whatever he's doing and then showing out the bars or whatever, he's not actually taking his training serious. You know that Chandler's in there working hard every day. 100%. I think McGregor's on his way out of UFC, and Me he's too. and he's gonna start wrecking other other companies. I know? think that if Conor McGregor got in the BKFC, it would be absolutely. I think crazy. it's gonna happen. I think that he, I think there's a higher chance than it not happening. Well, then just think about his leg. You know, if if if, the, if yeah, yeah. If I think yeah, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, McGregor. Boxing is insane. Bare knuckle would be insane. Yeah, no, yeah, he's a great boxer. He's a great striker. And is his leg gonna hold up? Possibly. Yeah, that's Possibly. the biggest question we all have. We right? we all see it, you know, uh, especially in his last three four fights. It's McGregor's all... gonna lose. Come fight bare knuckle MMA for Kill Eagle. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we've seen it in his last three four fights. He's been favoring his leg since the injury, and um, I don't know that we'll get the same McGregor ever again. Oh, yeah, Jamie, I do remember that when Tim Welsh was on the season one of that Bellator Fight Master. I think the coaches were like Randy Couture and Shamrock. Um, there was two others. I think Greg Jackson was actually one of them, too. Um, That's a great memory, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Hell, yeah. Uh, Volkanowski, man, he's a topic of your own, and I think he's an inspiration for everyone because he's right now I think he's a lot of everyone's favorite guy. Yeah, how is it? Yeah, how is anybody at 145 gonna beat that dude? I don't think there is anyone in 145. I mean, why even make him go back down and fight? Let's see. I want to see Holloway versus uh, Yair Rodriguez. I think that fight would be fireworks. That would be. Yeah. I think that you know they're both long and lengthy. They both strike really well. I wouldn't see either of them trying to go to the ground. So I feel like you say Holloway, be, Max. Yeah, Max Holloway and uh, Yair Rodriguez. Because I don't think. I mean, as they much get as, wrecked. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think that Holloway <laughs> no. would beat Volkanovski. I mean, who, how many times have we tried it? All right, so who it, realistically has a chance against Volk or taking the belt from Volk in that division or below? No one. Yeah, he has to move up. I laugh at I laugh at when uh, Aljo's acting like he's going to go up there and beat him. You know, I thought maybe Cejudo could do something to Volkanovski just because of how smart he is. Aljo man would get destroyed. Yeah, destroyed. Yeah. 
Yeah, just Volks. It's crazy. He was a heavyweight rugby player. You know what I mean? Like, could we see Sean line up against him if they get belt and unify or uh, double division belts? Uh, dude, that'd be crazy because Sean's striking like, so undisputed? good. Undisputed. Dude, that'd be crazy. It would be awesome. And then he goes up. Yeah, hmm. that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um. So we're we're getting to our closing here. So these are rando topics. We like to ask the the fans to join in. He's on not these. scared, huh? We can talk about the next one, but he's not scared. About what? About the Logan Paul thing. Oh, oh no. Okay, so I want it. All right, so Logan Paul allegedly has the best UFO footage in history. He said he he it's he doesn't even have the hard copy. So what he has. He wanted to buy the hard copy. Right. So the individual says, yo, I got the best UFO footage ever. I'm going to invite you to come view it, and you can buy it from me. Yeah. And Logan Paul's like, okay. Oh, no, no, you, he doesn't even give him the option to buy it. He's like, just come view this shit, talk about it, right? Maybe put it on your platform. Logan Paul shows up, does what Logan Paul does, does some dirtbag shit, brings a, secure, like a secret camera on him, and records it. Yeah. And he says it's on fucking believable he says it's so unbelievable that it might not be believed because of how real it is. And um, he said that he's scared to release it, and uh, that's been the thing. That's been a few topics. What are your guys' thoughts on that? That'd be nuts to see. I'd like to see some more UFC. UFO I want to know what he thinks the right time or what the right situation is for it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, why, he what, said he's waiting for the right time, but what is it? Yeah, right. If it's not now, then what is it? Yeah, I mean, we're in the midst I, of World War Three. I think some yeah, alien footage would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah dude, that's United, another you know, thing. We're People don't believe we're actually like, going here. to war. We're going to war. Oh, uh, yeah, they're preparing. <laughs> oh, the yeah. South China Sea is a mess, and we're worried about Ukraine. No, we're, we should be worried about what's going on in Taiwan mm-hmm. and us surrounding China for the first time in 40 fucking years. And that's some real shit, is that we moved into the South China Sea after 40 fucking years of being absent. Yeah, we moved into war formation, and we're we're on the verge. So yeah. it'd be nice to see something like a, a UFO to be like, okay, so maybe aliens are coming to fuck us up. It's time for us to unite as humans. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, and then you know what? What are the thoughts on you? You think he's gonna get sued? Do you think NDAs were signed? Do you like, like, what's the status of that? You know, what I mean, what's the him re- saying that he has it, and the dude knows who? Right. It is? What's the repercussions of him saying that? I filmed this guy without him knowing it and got his footage. You know, there's got to be yeah. some repercussions of that, right? For sure. Uh, He's willing to pay it, though. Oh, fuck, that's He's got what the I'm most saying. expensive Charizard card in the world, so he'll yeah, be okay. Yeah, he does, in too. In a dope-ass chain, dude. Mm-hmm. I like the Paul brothers, dude. I, I think uh, both the Paul brothers, like, because he done two WrestleMania events now. I yep. love watching. So I watch WWE. I ain't going to lie. I watch a lot of WWE. Um, ain't nothing to think, be ashamed of, yeah. bro. We're all fucking 90s fucking mutts, dude. Yeah. That's all we grew up on. No, so my We buddy. just had Ken Shamrock on. If you haven't yeah, watched it, go yeah. back and watch it. That shit was legendary. Yeah, no, the, uh, the uh, you know, I like watching the WWE, and I think that he does some crazy stuff, like when he did that flip off the top Insane, of the rope. With the yeah, phone, he did, dude. Super athletic, phone. dude, yeah. And then at the Royal Rumble when him and Ricochet both jumped off the top rope and closed each other. fucking insane, dude. Yeah. Who's just, doing that right now in WWE? Not many, you know what yeah, I mean. No, he's doing he's, high flying stuff. He's doing yeah. he's doing shit that they do on the cheap WWE shows. are still awesome athletes. I agree with that, Wes. You do still yeah. look at when Cody Rhodes performed in that with the torn pec. Uh, I don't whole, know much. Five about point it. game. Lakers coming back. Yeah, no, he tore, he performed in a whole hell in the cell. Eighty on a three. Really torn pec. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. Eighty three. Let's go, Lake it, Show. Dude, one of my favorite to watch shots. The bus, I'll keep one of my up, favorite dude. shots was when he uh, hit that three pointer in the bubble against the Nuggets. To I go still remember that. I still remember that. In the Mamba jerseys, please, yeah. LA, if you can see or hear this podcast, bring back the Mamba jerseys, please. No, we, shit. we never lost, so dude. Yeah. We never lost. We're undefeated yeah. in them, bro. Undefeated in yeah. the Mamba jerseys, like please bring those back. Those yeah, maybe when we go home, we That'd have two next games at home. Yeah. Um, you know, if you could wake, Levi, this is yours, baby. Oh, if you could wake up anywhere tomorrow, where would it be? Kyle? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Good yeah. call. I've always wanted to go there even before, like, weed was actually, like, a legal thing. I thought that that would be, like, the coolest place to go. Levi? Um, Bora Bora? Dope. Ready for mine? Yeah, bye. 
Dubai. Oh, bro, that place I, is nice. I've got a fucking shit. Dubai, dude. That, it's so rich over there and so nice. Yeah. I try to get in LeBron with the and a Mamba and... jersey is a major insult, not even close. <laughs> Wes. Wes is a big Kobe fan. I was just actually talking to him about that the other day. Um, so, uh, you know, you've talked about what you're doing, what you're building. You're fairly new into your recovery. You're fairly new into the fight game. So where do you see yourself? What's the end game for Kyle? Are you going to keep uh, driving and continuing to fight for a long time? Or what's the end game? Uh, you know, like I said, fighting is kind of like a bonus for me. I just want to be able to, like, preach about my sobriety and the addiction and, you know, mental mental health awareness, especially for us, man. I think that a lot of our feelings are kind of stuffed under the table. And, like, we don't ma- – it's not that we don't matter. It's just, like, we're supposed to be the strong ones. Could you become you know? a fighting counselor? That'd be sweet, too. Like an LA, uh, LAC? That'd be sweet. I think that being in LAC would be really cool to help people out. I you know I don't know that you know how hard it is to get something like that, but like um, I could see the 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 inspiration that it could inspire to see somebody perform in the ring and also perform in real life. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. Yeah, that's what they, you know the biggest thing with me is the the fighting thing is just to show people that you no matter what you do you can change. That's badass, man. I yeah. like that a lot. Um, so what would you? What would you like to accomplish if you gain the the recognition and the respect in your community that you've been desiring with your fight game? Yeah, I'd just like to accomplish, you know, pushing more of the mental uh, health awareness. Specifically. It's good to be specific when you're manifesting your future. Um, I, bipolar. Bipolar stuff for as far as the mental health goes, and then the addiction is the uh, push the awareness of like methamphetamine use. You're talking about seminars, speeches, yeah, speeches, annual standing events. up. You know, because I know a lot like of these, motivational speaking type shit. Yeah, because okay. I know a lot of these kids know a lot of these kids coming up kind of know who I am or what I've been. So like to you know see some of these kids who know who I was and see who I'm becoming on, would it help them change. Defense. Sorry. Oh, got him. Rebound. Reeves, let's go, let's man. Go. Sorry, guys. No, uh, it's all right. Um, and then, um, would, th- this is one of my closing and final questions for you. What is you, that? Is, would you go to BKFC if the oppor- opportunity presented itself, or are you sticking to MMA? No, I'd go to BKFC 100%. I think that, like, with my age and way I am right now, that the less wear and tear I have to do as far as, like, wrestling or judo or any of that other stuff, I'd, I'd definitely do BKFC. Is that right? Just get ready to just stand cool. and bang? That'd yeah, be cool. stand and bang. I think that'd be sweet. I wouldn't have to learn a bunch of new stuff, and Ryan's a really good boxing coach, and I think that that would be really cool to do. I think you might. Um, How was that? You know Ryan Hall? Hall yo. Huh? Ryan Hall is a local matchmaker in Montana that works directly with BKFC, and I highly suggest that you get in touch with Ryan Hall because maybe he doesn't know about you as well, and he's always looking for some talent. And it would be fun to see you in a victory circle giving a good speech like you have. Yeah, I think that would be sweet, you know. Uh, Yeah, I'd be doing – I'll definitely – when I get back to the house and – I'll definitely be getting a hold of that guy, for sure. It's a good guy to get a hold of, a good guy to to, um, have in your back pocket for fights in the future as well. Okay. Austin Reeves got ice in his veins. It's getting so cold. Oh, what's, uh, so we're looking at a 99-101 score with a minute left. Uh, Denver's Austin Reeves ball. just hit a big old 3 right there. Hachimura is actually sitting on Jokic, like usual. That's um, good. That's I'm just going to close this out because yeah. we're, we're in the final, and I'm going to get Sponsorships. Loud. Yeah, do you have any future sponsorships or current sponsorships that you're looking uh, to No, Lifka said they were going to sponsor me. I'm going to go back and talk to them. Like I said, um, Bear Pop Lane that my friend Amber owns. Um, the Highline Flea Market, my buddy Billy owns, um, Nalifka's Pizza Kitchen, Master Ooh, Sports. LeBron just tweeted and that's before. something that <clears throat> I'm going to tell everybody that comes from anywhere. If we get these fights in Haver, you definitely need to eat at Nalifka's Pizza Kitchen. Graham's Ice Cream, my buddy Bud owns. Um, those guys aren't like my sponsors, but I do like to put their businesses out there because they're all small businesses. And I know they'd do more for me if they could. So, and, uh, Highline Clean Rides, there's a few others that are there. But, yeah, Lifka's right now is the only one that said they would actually commit, you to, know, you. commit to me. Sure. And so that's cool, you know, because I've known uh, those guys for a long time, and they've seen my my road and where I am. So for them to reach out to me was really uh, big. It made me feel good. I couldn't even believe it when I had walked out of there. So Badass, man. Uh, Levi, run it, baby. You know what it is. Guerrilla Warfare Apparel, best gear in the fight world. 
stop in today, TWB10 at checkout, GorillaWarfareApparel.com. That's TWB10 uh, at checkout, and you'll save yourself 10%, baby. <laughs> and 20 past four, your one-stop vaping head shop. Two locations in Great Falls, one in Helena, one in Billings. You never know what's coming next. Um, Jamie St. Mark's, as always, shout out to her, A1 Day 1. Uh, Hudson trash removal. Hudson trash removal, that's right, sir. If you need something removed, he'll take it out. You got someone want gone, he'll take them out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm our, definitely calling that guy. <laughs> and, our, and our newest sponsor, Halftime Sports Bar and Taco Treat. You want to watch the fights? Go down to the Halftime Sports Bar and watch it. Get yourself a taco. And if you are at the after party, get yourself a victory taco. That's Cheers. Right. Thanks for watching Weekly Bust, you guys. Guerrilla Warfare Apparel. Thank you guys Peril. for having me. Thank you. Get yourself a Thanks, shirt. Thanks, You're welcome on anytime, man. Thanks. You deserve it. With that, we are the Weekly Bust. Thank you. Time to watch the Lakers win.